Um, hi guys, welcome to the Media Engine Vegum Tools introductory um, tutorial. Uh, that'll show you how to use um, this uh, no tie away uh, template uh, classes and functions. It helps you build um, no tie away types of Vegum games. So not, no tie away types of Vegum games are uh, like um, Guitar Hero, um, Rhythm Zone, Tap Tap, um, Beat Star. These types of games where you have um, notes rushing towards you and you have to press a button uh, to get a score. Okay, and uh, these games can be pretty lucrative. Uh, you can see on BitStar generates uh, about seventy-three million in a year. Also, I think. But anyway, if you want to build this type of games, um, this is the plugin for you. Okay, so I'm going to make this demo using Unreal Engine five point three. But this applies to 5.1, 5.2, and uh, all the way back to 5.0, okay? So let's just start with the demo map, okay? So you'll find this map in um, Plugins, Media Engine, Rhythm Tools. So if you want to find this folder, um, the content folder, you have to do Settings, and then Show Engine Content, and Show Plugin Content. These two will need to be ticked. If you've installed this to the engine location, you have to do engine right here, plugins, and then look for this plugin right here. So once you've opened this um, rhythm tools content folder, you want to go to maps and then let's open the template map. Okay. So if I press play, right here, then I'm going to simulate, go into our selected viewport and then play. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's just the type of um, game that's happening. So the thing that's driving all of this, um, most of these things, is this um, rhythm section blueprint. So I'm going to go into this blueprint and explain what's happening. So if you go back to the rhythm um, tools content and go to blueprints, actors, you'll find our BP rhythm section actor right here. Okay, if you can't find it here, that you can always click edit, uh, edit the, the blueprint right here. Anyway, I'm going to use this one. Um, I don't need to read this for now because I'm going to explain it anyway. So let's go straight to begin play and see what happens on begin play. So on begin play, uh, we're running a sequence. The first thing we do right here is we set up our inputs. Okay, so that um, WASD responds to the left um, left side of the node highway, and then the up arrow down and left arrow keys respond to the right side. Okay. So you get the player controller and we are using the enhanced input um, subsystem, which means we have the enhanced input um, plugin enabled. So it needs the enhanced input plugin to work. Anyway, um, we add the mapping context for the left lane, mapping context for the right lane. So for these two, you have to go to um, input and you can see how they are set up. These are just input actions. For example, this is the input action, left lane, the down action, which means um, the one for the down arrow. Uh, left action, the one for the left arrow. So just a simple input action. And then we have an input action context mapping. Okay. Or input um, mapping context, I'm sorry. So in our mapping context, we actually map our, our actions to buttons. So you can see the left lane down action is mapped to the S button. Um, the left lane uh, left action is mapped to the A button and so on and so forth. This is one, this is the one for the left lane. And then we have another one for the right lane, which you'll find on the right lane. All right. Okay, simple. Um, the second thing that we do on begin play is we add our widgets. So we create a widget that will show uh, the user the score. And then this is the instruction widget. You can remove that if you want. And then um, the third thing that we do is we basically start our MIDI broadcaster by calling the start broadcast function. Um, and then we call the, we choose our MIDI asset and then we choose the sound or the, the music that we play. So the sound, this MIDI asset will be um, synced to the sound asset. And then we have this lead in time, which is basically a delay for the sound, but at the same time will be triggered with notes. And what I mean by this is that if you press play, you can see that these notes are coming to you, but the sound is not playing. These notes are coming to you, but the sound is not playing until the first note reaches here. So this is what you use this for. Um, if you're confused about these two, 
the AX MIDI broadcaster, make sure you watch the MIDI broadcaster tutorials, okay? Since uh, Rhythm Tools is an extension to the MIDI Engine Broadcasters plugin, so make sure you check that out. So um, before we go any further, I want to explain some important um, some impo important components, okay? So Rhythm Tools is built in such a way that you can turn any actor, right? Any actor of your choosing, any actor that you have, into a rhythm section. So the way we do that, we make use of components, right? So uh, the most important component, or the first one we want to discuss is the rhythm section component. First thing you want to do, you want to call add, and then right rhythm section, right? So this component is a media listener, right? And it will listen to the notes that are triggered when this um, media set is playing. This is a very important class. So when those media notes are playing and um, this rhythm section is listening, it will then make decisions on where to spawn notes, left, right, or what type or what type of notes are getting spawned. Okay. So in your rhythm section, you want to have a rhythm lane. So what's a rhythm lane? A rhythm lane is basically just a spline. Okay. As you can see, it's a spline. I just renamed it here. It's a spline component. So on the right here, we have um, a rhythm lane. Just add a spline. And then on the left here, we have another rhythm lane, right? And then another class that you want to pay attention to is the rhythm judgment box, okay? You can find it here, just type rhythm again. You find the rhythm judgment box. So the rhythm judgment box is these two right here. These are basically just box, box collisions, okay? But we handed it from them and then we added some functionality to it to make sure that um, uh, they're useful in uh, in this type of games. So the rhythm judgment box, what it does is it waits for notes, it notes will be coming all the way, and then when it enters, when the note enters here, the rhythm judgment box will check um, which button is the user currently playing, and then it checks is there a note that's colliding with this rhythm judgment box, and if yes, does that note some um, input action match the button that the user is playing, is pressing, okay? I'll explain that in a bit, but this is where we judge. First, we determine if there's a note or a rhythm actor inside of our judgment area. And then we decide to give us uh, the user score or don't give a score. What you see here, the, yeah, these two um, halos, these are just visuals, okay? These are just the tech mesh components and these are up to you, okay? So you can just change this into whatever you want. For example, we can do this, right? So this, these ones are for visual so that your user can see where the judgment area is, right? Where they should be pressing the button is. Because these box colliders are going to be invisible to the user uh, or the person playing the game. So we've explained, um, yeah, these important concepts. Rhythm section. Um, judgment box and the rhythm lane, which is basically the note highway and then the media broadcaster, okay? So keep this in mind as we will explain the functions that they use. So the rhythm section is a media listener and then so on and so forth. Okay, um, one other setting that's important for the rhythm section is this um, judgment point index right here. So as you can see, I've set it to one. And you know that splines have multiple points, so zero, one, two, three. So this judgment point should be where your um, Judgment boxes are, okay? So keep that in mind. Here's one important thing too. Rhythm Tools comes with um, two interfaces that you need to implement for this entire system to work, okay? So in our actor right here, if you go to class settings, you scroll all the way down, you have this rhythm section interface. So you need to add this rhythm section interface wherever you add the rhythm section component. So step one, add the rhythm section component. Step two, add the rhythm section interface to the class that you're adding uh, the rhythm section component to, right? The moment you do that, you'll get access to these two functions, right? If you go to interfaces, you see sport rhythm vector, select rhythm spline. 
The first one I want to start with is select rhythm spline. First, I'm going to explain the purpose of this function, and then I'm going to show you how the template implements it. So the select rhythm spline actually gives you the designer. Let's say that you're a, blue, you're a blueprint programmer. You don't want to go into um, C++. So it allows you the designer to choose which spline, right, is mapped to which MIDI track, okay? What do I mean by this? If you go into this function, you can see that this function passes in the track name, right? And then if the track is a kick, right, it uses the rhythm lane one, which is basically the note highway one, or I like to call them rhythm names, but you can call them note highways, um, rhythm lane one, right? If the, if the track is a kick, that note goes here. If the note that's playing comes from the snare track, that note goes into rhythm lane two, which is rhythm lane two, the one on the right, right? So if you had another lane, like lane three, you'd probably add another input here, tap the track name, and then map it to that um, rhythm line or note highway. Next, you want to cover spawn rhythm actor. This also goes back to um, giving um, blueprint programmers or designers the chance to choose um, the rhythm actor that's going to be used. Rhythm actor in our rhythm tools terms is these things, right? Okay, these um, these static meshes. We call them rhythm actors. So going back here. Before we explain this function, I'm going to show um, what's a rhythm actor. So coming back here, this, let me pause here. This is a rhythm actor. This is a rhythm actor. This is a rhythm actor. You can see if you look to the right, you have these three rhythm actors spawned. Okay. So how do you create that class? So if you open this BP rhythm actor example, we have this rhythm actor. As you can see, it's an actor, which means you can use in class. You can use a character, you can use pretty much any class, right? As long as you add a static mesh for the for the player to see, if it's an arrow, it will use an arrow, right? So if you do SM underscore left arrow, this would be a left arrow, all right? But we'll get that later. So you need a static mesh at the minimum. The second thing, most important thing is you go to class settings again, right? And then you implement this interface. It's important that you implement this interface, the rhythm input interface, right? Once you implement this, it will give you access to this get rhythm input function. The purpose of this function is that, um, let's say, for example, your static mesh is set to the left arrow which means that you want the input, if the static mesh is spawned, the one with the left arrow, you want your player to press a left arrow to get a score, right? So what this interface function is asking you, is it as it's asking you to return the input function associated with the rhythm actor, which means, right, if our mesh is the left arrow, this function should return input action for the left, right, the left input action, right? So say, say we want to return this one. This is what you pass here in your function, right? So what we did here to make this dynamic, right? As you can see, there's no default here. We've added this as a variable to this actor blueprint so that you can set it after spawning it. We'll get to the spawning part and then setting this here. But by implementing this function, you just return this, okay? So step one, add a static mesh. Step two, add the interface. Step three, implement this function. It will ask you to return a value. Just create a variable and then return that variable. I'm explaining um, the, the template terms, but you can customize this however you want. So we're going to get go back to spawning this rhythm actor and how we set this to specific um, actions.